whether they're the result of folklore combined with overactive imaginations, or something genuinely supernatural, skinwalkers remain one of the most puzzling and disturbing of all paranormal phenomena. And in today's video, we have five unnerving and allegedly true stories about them. I'm Fearcrawler. Welcome to the video. My first experience happened at age eight. At first it would only run up and down the hallway. It would peek just around my doorway some nights and leave me frozen in fear. I was too stiff to call it for my mother. Eventually it became brazen off my fear. It would kneel down in my doorway. There it would sit before its bones cracked out of place. The figure was nearly eight feet tall black skin shrouded over bones with nothing to cushion against the creaking ligaments. Wide, far-spread eyes glowed an ominous white. I still remember how it crawled to the side of my bed like some contorted crab. When I shut my eyes tightly, it would be gone before I opened them once more and was back at the doorway. They couldn't touch me when my eyes were closed. This could be passed off for a young child's playful mind, if it was not for my parents' attention brought to it. My mother and father told me when I was older that I only stopped complaining when a man began to stand in my hallway. My mother had seen him first. A soft figure in a red cape and furred clothing with worn leathers. He was obviously Native American and from the Alaskan tribes or North Canadian. When he began to appear, the hauntings ended in that house. And when we moved, they surged at me violently, and I experienced skinwalkers and other beings regularly until I was 13. At 14, when I lived in Germany, an old woman told me that my aura was dark and that several demons had tried to follow me into her house. She had rosaries all over her home. Since then, I've witnessed horrifying sounds, touches, scratching on my bedposts, and other teasing horrors. Nothing really makes them go away unless I go on certain medicines or try my best to ignore everything. I've got autoimmune disorders and severe anxiety as well as depression. Could these play into the attraction that some dark entities have towards me? I'm no longer interested in making it end because I know it won't. I just want to know how to protect myself and how to learn more exactly about these things. Vernal is about three hours away from Salt Lake City, and quite honestly, it's a total backwater town that has no city codes whatsoever. You can pretty much have a cow in your front yard and you won't get a fine. Vernal is a little behind, meaning they don't have any major entertainment places, and they only have one Walmart, which is pretty awesome considering Walmart is taking over the world. But more on point, Vernal contains one of the places I would love to see. Vernal is home to Skinwalker Ranch, now, this sounds gross like a nudist ranch, but believe me, it isn't. You can actually read a book about it. It's called Hunt for the Skinwalker, and you can also watch some videos on YouTube about it. My sister lived about 40 minutes from this ranch, and I believe whatever resides on this ranch also haunts the neighboring properties, and whatever else is close by. A skinwalker is a type of witch that can take an animal form of their choice, based on Navajo Indian legend, and instead of healing a person, the skinwalker will curse you. According to my brother, who is a friend of a Navajo Indian, the witch can only become a skinwalker by killing a close friend or relative. They don't talk about it or think about it, because it's believed that once you acknowledge it, they will find you. Back to my point. While I was in Vernal visiting, I ended up sleeping on the couch, and just before I went to sleep, I heard this whispering in my ear. It was a loud commanding whisper, and when I repositioned myself on the couch to find the source of the voice, my sister's dog came running out of the hall, and just stood there looking at me, 
and then laid down by the couch next to me, making a whimpering noise. To me it seems that Vernal has a lot of hauntings, and I firmly believe they stem from Skinwalker Ranch. It has a history of hauntings, UFOs, cattle mutilations, a wolf that can look into the window of a truck without standing on its hind legs, and pretty much 400 acres of complete weirdness. I live on the reservation and this stuff happened. It's scary because I live in the middle of nowhere. I have lots of skinwalker stories, but this happened last night, and it was scary. My parents went to my grandmother's bingo. Me and my two brothers, Hayden and Wyatt, were home alone. We wanted to do an all-nighter. You know how teens are when there are monster energy drinks around. Well, we did have two cans each, but we got tired anyway. It was around 2.30 a.m. I remember this because Hayden got into his PJs and brushed his teeth, and was just about to crawl into bed. I tucked him in and it was about 2.53. Me and Wyatt were watching the end of The Lion King, and when it was over we turned off the TV and turned on one of the lamps. We decided to camp out in the living room, and we were just about to fall asleep. As soon as the clock struck 3 a.m., I told Wyatt, wow, we almost made it to 3. We almost did an all-nighter. All of a sudden, someone started knocking on the door. And then a few minutes later, there was another knock, but this time on the window. I thought to myself, oh my god, that monster energy drink is really working on me. I put on my earphones for a few seconds, and then I heard someone whistle. I told Wyatt to stop doing that, and that he was scaring me. But then he woke up and said, it wasn't me. I wasn't doing anything. Then something banged really loudly on our door. It sounded like someone or something really wanted to come in. My stupid brother went to the door, just a step away from opening it, and I grabbed his shirt and said, Are you insane? We can't open the door. Then he said, Well, I'll just look out the window. So he did, and then said, I don't see anybody. We have this security light by our door and two blue healers that always bark when they hear something. After the loud bang, they started barking like crazy, so me and my brother got really scared. This thing, whatever it was, kept whistling, and another one was banging on the door. In the meantime, my brother had my iPod and was recording the sounds that were made. My brother Hayden woke up really scared, and when he woke up, he went to the window and looked out, and something black like a black shadow was there, really tall and really skinny. That tall skinny shadow was just looking at him for about a minute or two, and then it ran away. The shadow thing really scared him and he hurried up and shut the curtains, and then ran to me. While we were in shock, the clock struck 4 a.m., and all that noise went away. It was really creepy. After that we felt relieved. We then turned on all the lights, even the bathroom lights. A half an hour later, our parents returned and said, Oh, you guys are still up? We looked at each other and said, We're not going to sleep. They asked why, and we told them the whole story. We even played the recordings for them. And my dad said, Skinwalkers. Those are definitely skinwalkers. In the morning... We showed our parents and a medicine man where the skinwalkers were, and doing whatever they were doing. By the window and the door, they picked up bones and footprints, which was really scary. The medicine man told us that Hayden was lucky. When a skinwalker comes, they do bad things to you. So I'm glad Wyatt didn't answer the door. This happened to my cousin and I in the summer of 2010. I'm full Navajo and my cousin is half native and half Mexican, but he's more Navajo to me. I live with my grandmother and my dad in Shiprock in New Mexico over the summer. 
and in Farmington for school. My cousin and I were 14 when this happened at camp. We knew stuff always happened where we camped. For example, you'll hear coyotes howl. Where my uncle lives, his dogs are always barking, and he has five pit bulls and three German shepherds. They're not mean dogs, but when it's night and they start barking, it sounds like they're fighting outside with something. Since the age of seven, me and my cousin have always camped in Weedfield, Arizona, and stayed at my uncle's for like a month. My aunt would sometimes come over and camp with us by the lake. We liked staying there because we liked fishing, playing with the dogs, eating some mutton. We visit our friend who works at the store there, and we hang out and fish sometimes. He's lived there for half his life, and he knows almost everything about the place. We sometimes ride his horses around the lake and fish while the horses rest. One night when me, my aunt, and my cousin were camping, my aunt said she was going to pick up one of her friends and get some munchies for us down in Red Valley and Cove. When she left, we caught a trout and cooked it. We usually hear howling and people partying by the lake, but this particular night it was just two campers on the west side of the lake, and one by us who was sleeping. I got a feeling there was something watching us in the tall bushes. I was shining my flashlight by the trees, but I saw nothing. Then the coyotes started howling on the other side of the lake, which is the south part of the lake. They seemed to be getting closer and closer. I was freaking out because I heard one behind us howl. My cousin was putting his tackle box away, but decided to put a giant thick stick on top of it. Only an animal or a person could move it. We put everything away as best we could and went in the tent. For a while, we just kept hearing little footsteps behind our tent. We must have been in the tent for maybe 15 minutes or so when we heard something outside the tent. Like something was digging into my cousin's tackle box. Something else was trying to open my aunt's tent, but luckily I tied fishing string to it. Then something else was putting out the fire, and I know no one was around our campsite, or I would have heard louder footsteps. We had this feeling that there were six of something, because all the same time, one was putting out the fire, one was trying to open my aunt's tent. One was bothering my cousin's tackle box. Three were thought to be behind our tent. It was just a feeling we had. We knew they were skinwalkers, because you could smell dead animals and feel something evil was around you. What freaked us out the most was we saw what looked like goat's feet and horns like a deer walk in front of the fire which we saw clearly. My heart was pumping so hard I could feel and hear it. They stayed there and kept trying to scare us. And they did. They kept saying our names, Caleb, then Dominic, over and over. We had aluminum bats with us in the tent, but we were too scared to do something. I kept thinking that this was my last day on earth, over and over. I kept praying to God that my aunt would come back soon and quick. I do believe in God, and I know he answered my prayer, because after about seven minutes into saying my prayer, my aunt finally came back. When she came back, I was relieved, but still shaking. She said she saw six men with skin on them, and then they ran off. The stick my cousin had put on his tackle box was three inches away from it. We were all freaked out that night, because we heard growls in the middle of the night. I put ash around the tent because I wanted to be protected. I know this probably doesn't sound real, but this story is true. I know they were skinwalkers, and that they're real. When me and my cousin tell our story, we start shaking because we're still scared of what happened that night. My aunt doesn't speak about what we saw because she believes that if she does, they'll come back for us. We know there are evil spirits everywhere, and one of them that I really believe in is the Skinwalker. As a teenager, I would visit my grandma at her home on the Navajo Reservation for several weeks every summer. 
I love to spend time with her, eat delicious fried bread, and hear her tell stories. Every so often my grandmother would hire a worker, the harmless town drunk, to do odd jobs around her house and property. One evening right before the sun went down, I was asked by my grandma to take him home, which was about four miles out of the valley where she lived. I was more than happy to, seeing that I was only 14 years old and asked to drive a truck. Mind you that on the reservation, nobody cares that you're only 14 years old and driving around. There's hardly anybody around to see you anyway. So my nine-year-old brother jumped in the truck cab with me, while this worker and my dog shared the tailgate of the truck, and we were off. After I dropped the worker off at the shack that he and his brothers called the house, we headed back down the road to my grandmother's. As I mentioned before, it was the evening and the sky was a deep red as the sun began to set behind us. We were leaving a nice dust trail from the dirt road, and the radio was playing music from the only radio station that could be picked up in the nearest town of Holbrook, Arizona. There was nothing unusual, nothing weird. It was at this time that my eye caught movement of something in the bushes, a little up the road to the right of us. I remember slowing down, thinking that it was one of the many free-roaming sheep in the area that would dart out in front of the truck. As I passed where I thought I saw it, I sped up thinking nothing else of it. Then out of nowhere, I just felt this dark feeling of fear and dread. I had no idea why I was feeling this way, but... I definitely felt that something was wrong. As I play this memory back in my mind, there are only a few clear memories that I have of that evening. I clearly remember looking into my rearview mirror and seeing the dark silhouette of something very tall and very skinny that seemed to be covered with some kind of hair or fur running behind the truck after us. Whatever it was, it wasn't a normal human or human at all. I remember hearing my brother crying and my dog barking furiously at whatever was chasing us. I remember speeding very fast and shaking violently as my truck bounced on the washboard dirt road. I distinctly remember that this thing was only getting closer as my brother cried, It's coming up on your side. I remember being scared as hell and thinking that I didn't want to die. At that moment that I thought would be our last, I remember speeding around a bend in the road and seeing a car coming towards us in the opposite direction. At that moment I felt instant relief, and I felt that whatever was following us was gone. Shaken up but alive, we made it back to my grandmother's house, wondering what the hell had just happened. We ran inside, not looking back, hoping that whatever was chasing us had not followed us home. As we told my grandmother about our experience, she didn't seem too surprised, which was surprising to us. She continued by repeating stories that we had already heard at one point or another about black magic, witches, and something that the Navajos call skinwalkers. Needless to say, I didn't even want to look out the windows for the rest of that night. As a matter of fact, I never drove on the reservation at night again until I was 21 years old. That's all for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed those stories. Until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, Stay scared.